The Mandalorian Season 3 finale, it ends with Chapter 24, The Return. And I'm still left here wondering, what was The Return? Was it the return of a character from the past? Uh, not really. To be honest, the title of this episode was a little bit misleading, but I guess the return has to do with the conclusion of the episode. First of all, this episode really felt like a season finale. They wrapped up a lot of different story threads, they gave us a lot of big moments, and there was a big battle. In fact, the majority of this episode was just a big battle. If you remember when last episode we left off, Din Djarin was kidnapped by Moff Gideon, and uh, the... The Mandos were on their way out. So Moff Gideon, or I'm sorry, uh, Mando is there, right? And he's being kind of trapped by the, the the troopers, the stormtroopers. He breaks out of them and uh, while he's being captive. And he th there's some de there are some deadly kills here, bro. Din Djarin was not holding back. They're stabbings to the neck, flamethrower. I mean, they really, really did a great job in him being brutal. Grogu shows up with IG-11, uh, or IG-12, whatever, and uh, he makes the save. He makes the big saves, and Grogu really became the centerpiece of this episode. In many ways, Grogu overshadowed Din Djarin, and Bo-Katan kind of did too, you know, so I do wonder if going forward, if they're even going to, you know, feature him as a prominent role. I really don't know. So... Gideon knows that the Mandalorians escaped. Meanwhile, there's a big battle going on outside. Din is talk talking to R5 to find Gideon. And um, the TIE Interceptors go up and there's a big space battle. They're blasting the um, that Star Destroyer that the Mandalorians were in. This is an amazing sequence. I mean, you're literally witnessing dozens upon dozens of Mandalorians with their rocket packs facing off against the troopers with their rocket packs, the rocket troopers. They fly now? They fly now. Let's not forget that garbage from that freaking movie. Don't even get me started, bro. Like, watching this season finale made me hate the sequel trilogy even more because they could have done stuff like this. They could have made it satisfying. This was a very satisfying conclusion to the season. And to be honest, it elevated the season. This season was a tiny bit mid, to be honest with you. It was a big step down from season two. And the ending of this season didn't really give me the tears that seeing Luke come back did, but it definitely did provide payoff for these characters. So, R5... Is um is being very useful right here, you know, unlocking things, trying to find um Gideon, and so get so they go into a room with these Gideon clones. So we find out that Gideon's plot with the clones is that he's creating clones of himself. This is obviously you know going to tie into things later on, P possibly Project Necromancer. Difficult to say, but we find out later on that these these clones are force sensitive. And Gideon himself says that later on. There's a scene where he actually states that. So Mando destroys the entire room. Now, this really reminded me of something out of Resident Evil. You know how when you go into a room and like you have these, um, you have these uh, like monsters, specifically in Resident Evil 3, the PS2. One version, the original version, they're trapped in this liquid and you push the button and they get out. The Frog Hunters, remember that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right here. So, reinforcements arrive to help out Bo-Katan. There's a huge fight here. The Mandalorians and the Imperial Troops, and Bo-Katan's got the Darksaber. I cannot tell you how incredible this was. It was probably the biggest sequence we've ever seen in The Mandalorian. And, not just that, it was also a, an effective use of the Darksaber, and the music was outstanding, yo. It was totally outstanding. So there's a big freaking giant fight, and Gideon wanted to create these Force clones, but, you know, Din Djarin blew up the room. And then it ends up leading to Din Djarin versus Gideon with his big armor. So it's like the final boss, armored Gideon. Meanwhile, the Praetorian guards show up and it becomes four on one. But then Grogu appears. Then Grogu is able to move inside of the robot. He's able to move them to the other room. So it becomes the three Praetorian guards against Grogu. Now, the Praetorian guards were built up as being this menacing force. 
the part where Grogu is like fighting them and like dodging them, it's a little bit goofy, if I'm being honest with you. It really did come off a little bit goofy. And I understand they're trying to put these guys over as being scary, but the way they went down like chumps in The Last Jedi with that horrible sequence that's extremely overrated and very badly choreographed, just look it up. Watch it again, see how bad it is. Here they try to kind of save them, but they're still, you know... They're just basically glorified jobbers. I wouldn't say they're total jobbers. I would say they're glorified jobbers. So Gideon is fighting Din Djarin again. And then Bo shows up, Bo-Katan, with the Darksaber. And she starts fighting Gideon. Um, and then uh, Din goes to save Grogu. So Din ends up getting jumped by the Praetorian Guards. And Grogu uses the Force quite effectively. And he uses them. So it becomes Din Djarin and Grogu against the Praetorian Guards. And, you know, the, the train that Luke gave Baby Yoda was effective here because if it wasn't for him, Din would have been killed. Meanwhile, in what I thought was the most shocking decision of the episode, Moff Gideon destroys the Darksaber. After all this time, after season one of Mando and Rebels, he destroyed the Darksaber. The Darksaber is destroyed. At this point, Din comes back into the fight. They all start teaming up on it. It becomes triple team. It's basically Grogu, Grogu, and, and Din take out the Praetorian Guards. Then it's Grogu, Din, and Bo against the armor Gideon. And they triple team him. Meanwhile, that big Star Destroyer ship that they came in on is on its way down. And it's about to crash. This was a huge sequence, a big set piece here. Um, and then while that happens, the ship lands, there's a huge explosion, and Grogu protects all of them with the Force. So he's able to push back the, the fire all around them and able to save them. Now, what we do not see is we do not see Gideon actually dying. It's implied that he died, but we don't actually see him dead. So the idea of Moff Gideon coming back for a season four or being in the Ahsoka show or possibly being you know in the upcoming Filoni film I mean that could definitely be something that they do that could for sure be something that they do so what ends up happening is Grogu saves them all and the the ultimate solution to all this is that Bo-Katan did manage to take back Mandalore the Imperial troops there were all destroyed and they do the ceremony for Din and then what ends up happening is or I'm sorry for uh for the kid what ends up happening is Din Djarin officially adopts Grogu and Grogu's name is then changed to Din Grogu because now Grogu is like his official son per the Mandalorian code. You know, they're in the Mandalorian caves and, you know, they, they anoint him and he is now Mandalorian, but of course he knows how to use the force. So what ends up happening is Din goes to one of the New Republic bases and he offers his services to the New Republic to take care of the Imperial Remnant in the Outer Rim. And uh, so that, to me, makes me think that they're going to continue this uh, show with a fourth season. I remember talking to Josh the other day and he told me that he wasn't sure if they're even going to do a fourth season and that there was a rumor that Din Djarin dies, that they shot two endings for this and that Din dies. But Din definitely did not die, yo. In fact, they set him up for even more adventures. He ends up, you know, talking to the New Republic about him being like a bounty hunter for them to help them with the Empire. Then he ends up going to Grief Karga and gives them... Uh, the IG droid back and then Grief Karga gives Din like a little place to live on his planet so it pretty much has a happy ending you know a surprisingly happy ending I was waiting for some kind of a cliffhanger I was waiting for something shocking to happen but there really was none of that you know Grogu is there using the force to lift up frogs. Din is there chilling. I mean, if they ended the series here, they it would be a satisfying ending because Mandalore has been taken back by the Mandalorians. Bo-Katan is the queen. She lit the fire. All this stuff that began in Rebels, well, even before Rebels and Clone Wars, all these different things were paid off here. So the Mandalorians now have their planet back. We don't know what's going to happen with Moff Gideon or with Din Djarin, but presumably we're not done with them because 
it really does feel like there's more coming, a fourth season. Ultimately, I'm going to do a review of the entire season at some point this week. So expect that on the channel very, very soon. Overall, this was the best episode of the season. I don't think it compares even remotely to the emotion that we felt way back during the finale of season two, seeing Luke again. Like That was just really powerful. But they definitely did the best they could as far as giving us a satisfying conclusion to this story. So the, the Mandalorian will live on and we'll see where they go from here. I seem to remember them actually doing, like announcing the fourth season. I could have sworn I had heard that, but maybe not. Anyways, thumbs up episode. The best one of this season still doesn't compare to season two, but I'll be covering more of that in my review for season three coming up in a few days. Anyways, y'all take care. Have a good one. I'll see you real soon and look forward to my review of the Power Rangers reboot, not reboot, the reunion special coming up later today. Take care.